Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 331R. We are going to recapitulate the lesson we had last night because we didn't complete it. I will give a brief synopsis of what we covered last night, and then we're going to go on to uh, complete... Uh, <coughs> the uh, unfinished portion. We said <clears throat> that we're living in a time in which the end of the age is rapidly approaching. Now the Father reveals his master plan for the events that are going to culminate in the end of this age. Before the period called the tribulation, Scripture teaches the Lord will directly intervene three separate times. The first direct intervention will be a spoken judgment that is arrayed against the whole human race. It will be sudden, it will be all encompassing. It will result in the collapse of the human order, the current Adamic civilization will utterly collapse, never to rise again. It will set in motion a return to the rule of the earth by the former races that dominated it before the creation of man. It will also set in motion the final stages of the development of the sons of God, the Prototokius group, the group that is designed to inherit all things. Now, <clears throat> what we find in the judgment period, as the current order is collapsing, as the tremendous shift is taking place in the current reality, <clears throat> the Prototokius group will begin to take domination of all things. Turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Verses 45 to 47. Then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. So this is telling us from eternity, my Father has destined this individual, which he calls a faithful and wise servant, to prepare himself for this unique period of time because in this unique period of time his authority to rule the father's household will become effective it will be set in motion it's destined to come into active Participation at the demise of the current order. Yes. Can you reiterate that? Specifically in verse 45, the household of the elders. Uh, Matthew 24, yeah. 45. What was it? The, the what household. Was the household? Can you reiterate who the household is? The significance is? of the household? No. Who, who are they? Well, the word household means family. Yes. 
And in this respect, it's those who are designated the sons of God from eternity. Okay, so they are the elders. Yes. Oh. And not anybody else. Well, as anybody else that wants to participate. Hmm. It's a level playing field in which the Father welcomes. I mean, all you have to do is be a faithful and wise servant. Prepare yourself for this time. Uh, Mark talks about that. Who is a, a faithful and wise servant who will ascend yes. to this position? So anybody who is born again can begin to desire this function, this position. The problem is not many people will. As a matter of fact, across the board, not many Christians and not the whole body of Christ are going to be prepared for what's going on, let alone the teachers, let alone the students. So should we look at it as those who turn up for the gathering are those who are considered the household? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. The individual who, well, turned to uh, Luke, the 21st chapter. 21st, you said? Yes, Luke, 21st chapter. Whoever adheres to this principle puts himself in a position yep. to be participating in this activity. Nation will rise upon nation and kingdom against kingdom. Well, what we want <coughs> verse 34 My apologies. No, no problem. Down to verse 36. <coughs> and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that day come on you unaware. So he's talking to the whole body of Christ here. Mm. And he's telling them this is what you need to do. You need to reach a state, number one, where you're totally committed to what you've been called to do so that in your commitment everything else won't affect you to distract you. And you'll be centered on what's important from a spiritual perspective. The underlying point I'm making is since those who are not pursuing these truths believe that they have the fullness of understanding, hmm. when it comes to being gathered for the gathering, they're not going to recognize that there is a process leading up to it. They, can't, they, won't, they won't be trained for it. They won't have any understanding of what no, that means. No, no. Therefore, going back to the term household, Matthew 24, 45, that percentage, whatever you, you say it is, has to be incredibly small. Small. Well, most definitely. It's a remnant. Yeah. Uh, but again, I, I can't emphasize enough, whoever <clears throat> fits into this mold will be qualifying himself for the things that will be forthcoming. Well, you look at it this way, and this is just this is a simple um, <clears throat> exclamation. You take the amount of Christians today in the age of grace who want to commit, and it's infinitesimally small. So you take that infinitesimally small amount today, and you fit them into this keyhole here, and you get a very, very tiny, minuscule group. But uh, the God wound is self-inflicted. Sure. And the Lord goes on to say, <clears throat> verse 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So if an individual makes himself ready, observes what's going on, and presents himself yielded to want to do the right thing, automatically excludes himself from the sufferings and the deprivation that are right. going to come on the world. Right.
unfortunately, it's basically the prototokis that will be the prevalent responders to this because of their makeup and the inherent desire within them to fulfill their calling. What is their calling? Feed the household of God, because that's what they were determined to do in eternity. Feed the household of God. Yes. Thank you. Now, having said that, we're still doing just a recapitulation. What will happen after the judgment will be events that lead to what we call the gathering, which is the second intervention. Scripture indicates the second intervention will occur when he descends to earth <coughs> to gather and reward the prototokius group, those that were faithful in their calling at the time of the judgment a span of time is going to progress at the end of which the Lord will descend to gather together the faithful into what we call the Prototokos Assembly. The Church of the Firstborn. Psalms 50, verse 3 to 5. Psalms 50, verse 2 to 5. What will happen as events begin to unfold here is going to become undeniable that what organized religion has been teaching its adherence is not coming to pass. The rapture will not have taken place. People are still going to be here suffering egregiously. That's why he says in Matthew 24, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. They're not going to understand why these things are happening to them and they're still here when they've been told all you got to do is wait and the, the Lord's going to come and whisk you away and all that's going to be left behind is your clothes. When that doesn't happen, people are going to lose their confidence in what they have been given. But at no point will they recognize that it's actually up to them to pursue something. No, because they haven't been taught that. They yeah. haven't been encouraged. They've been encouraged to sit perpetually under somebody who's teaching them perpetually as a perpetual teacher and they're a perpetual student. Right, but if they bother to open the Bible, they'll Given a nebulous, <laughs> nebulous, yes. not concrete idea of what you're supposed to do as a, or serve the Lord, be faithful to Him, and He's going to reward. Doing what? They're never told. Nor are they told any degree of what to expect. They're never given an eternal perspective of their calling. It's always centered on the earth. Mm. Uh, God's going to richly reward you with this, give you a double portion of that, bless you here, bless you there, coming in, going out. When that doesn't happen, people are going to be very disenchanted with the Christian belief. Yeah. Yeah. Wide open to the Luciferian God syndrome that will engulf the whole world. Oh, it's power. It's power. It's, it's supernatural deception that man has not experienced before, but will be wide open to at this time. So what we find, Psalms 50, 3 to 5, Our God shall come, and shall not keep silence, and fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. It's talking about his glory. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
He's calling the gathering unto himself. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter, <coughs> verse 9 to 10. Having made known unto us, who's the us? Those that are open to receive it, the prototokos, the faithful and wise servant that will be receptive to this revelation. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed, his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together he is going to descend in his glory and he's going to call to the heavens and to the earth to gather those who have been faithfully going about their calling unto himself to reward them <clears throat> in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are in earth. For the first time, the heavens and the earth are going to be connected in Christ. They were already connected in the Luciferian order, the fourth empire. Now, the things that are in Christ are going to be forever connected, never again to be separated. To what degree do the Luciferians comprehend the purpose of the gathering. They can see it happening. To no degree. They have the faintest zero. idea what's going on. So this is going to see people moving around and that's it. They're going to they're going to be subject to the power, to the restricting influence that the Lord is going to hold them in until after he's finished doing what he wants to do. Okay. The reason I ask because in Revelation 12, yes, Revelation 12, we see the enemy prepared, waiting for the birth of the, of the child. So he must have, to some degree, comprehension that something which is not good for him is about to happen. Oh, sure. Well, you have things throughout. He's, he's not deaf. He's heard the gospel of the kingdom. Right. He's heard the teachers for a long, protracted period of time preparing the prototokos for this point. So yeah, he's heard everything, but doesn't comprehend totally everything. But he knows enough to know that there's going to come a time when they're going to be taken off the earth. There's going to come a time when God's plan is going to be completed. He does not know the fullness of everything, sure. but he can he can deduce right. the thing leading up to right. it. Yeah, sure. Right. Even the unsaved people will have a comprehension of. You know, something's going on with these people. You're going to have the communities thriving. You're going to have the power of God resident on the earth in the person of the restrainer. They're going to know. Right. So, to what degree does the enemy attacks against the Prototokos teachers I'm now talking about? Because now it's a new reality. The Prototokos teachers have access to the entirety of the Holy Spirit to, you know, to, to that degree. They're not yet glorified, I understand that. But they have answers to it. To what degree can the enemy attack them? Those who are going to be the... He's not going to attack the teachers. Can he do anything against the He's going to attack the students. Okay. He's not going to attack the teachers because the teachers for the most part aren't oh, going to be on earth. They're going to be in heaven. Well, I was actually talking about beyond... But well, before the part where they're on earth. But that happens. Turn to Daniel, the 12th chapter. Okay. It's 
Starting in verse 8. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. This be good practice for you. Hey, I gotta get it out. And chapter 12. Mm -hmm. And then verse... Starting in verse 8. Perfect. The angels receive revelation from the angel. Right. Contained in this revelation is the lum sum total of the Father's master plan for the end of the ages which starts the beginning of sorrows. Verse 8. I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So he wants the angels to explain to him what the significance of this is. Verse 9, And he said to me, He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. They are closed up and sealed. Nobody is going to understand them until the time of the end. Then when they are brought forth and promulgated they're going to be understood by those to whom they were meant to be given the students the elders of the prototokis teachers now what happens when they're given this revelation note what he goes on to say many shall be purified and made white and tried because they're going to put the revelation into operation at a time when the Luciferians are dominating the earth realm. And this will necessitate, just like we're going through trials now, they're going to go through trials which are meant to develop them, mature them, prepare them for the time of the rapture. Right. So just before the return of the Lord, we 21, 36, just before he puts his feet on the ground. At that point, the Protocus teachers are the epitome of what they can be on the earth, because they're just about to go into the heavens, aren't they? At that point in time, does the enemy have any interest in attacking them, or do, does, does his attacks, are, are they now irrelevant? It's irrelevant because you have the shift from this reality to that reality. Mm. They're busy trying to establish their estates on the earth. They're busy trying to stabilize themselves because their time is gone as far as the Father's plan for the development of the Prototokus teachers. Okay. You've reached a stage now where you've qualified. So for them to continue to be allowed to do what they're right. doing now, okay. there's, no, there's no purpose in it. That's what I wanted to hear. So then when we see Jezebel in the communities being allowed to by the apostles and the, and the prophets and various other um, those who pretend to be Jews in the synagogue of Satan and so on and so forth these are tests which the Father allows for the, this is it, this is verse, verse yes, 10 yes, right. yes, for the elders yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes and then again just before the rapture yes, right Go on. You better squeeze it out, you brother Richard. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, what we're looking at is the gathering. The gathering will constitute communities on the earth. Turn to Jeremiah 23rd chapter. Verse 3. Okay. 
and I will gather, I will gather, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase. So they're gathered to the folds. Note what he goes on to say. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So the, take, the gathering takes place, and the shepherds are placed over the flock. Turn to Luke, 17th chapter. Verse 34 to 37. I'll tell you in that night there shall be two in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. They answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? He said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, the community, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Wherever the body is, <clears throat> the eagles are going to be gathered to that fold. Now, turn that's to... That's single fold. Yeah, that one every, is one fold. Everyone that's is one. going to have one. Turn to... Um, Revelation, first chapter, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Each angel is put in authority over a church community. Which takes us into where we're going now. <clears throat> Scripture teaches each church community will be given the revelation book with its prophetic visions so they will know the things that are to come. This will be done by the angel of each church. So what will happen, the angel that's put in authority over the church, one of his duties is to feed the church. At the same time, he's feeding the whole creation. How does he feed the church? The same way the angel fed the church in Revelation, the first chapter, through an elder of the church. Revelation 22, verse 16. 
Now this is referring to the time in which authority is conferred to the teachers to be uh, 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 ascended into the angelic position. He's talking here about the establishment of all the authority offices. The elders on the earth, angels in the heaven. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. He's talking about each angel now is testifying through the book of Revelation to the church that he's been given authority to teach. Note what it says. Note what it says. Verse 10. The angel tells John, He saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Now remember, they're in eternity. They're looking at the time of the gathering, not John's time. John represents the elder group that's going to receive the revelation knowledge from the angel. So the the uh, the you, of course, of the apostle elder, mm -hmm. are receiving it through the letter or through the Holy Spirit. Through the book. The angel testifies to John through the revelations in the book. It's the same way the time of the gathering, the angel is going to give the church that he's over the same revelation through the book that's in eternity. That at that point now is open to give to the church. They've been gathered. They're ready to receive it. Okay. So who reads the letter? The letter doesn't come into being until later on. The book is first given at the culmination of the gathering. The letter is presented at the end of the time, just okay. before the rapture. Right. Right. That's the good. letter is just um, <clears throat> an evaluation of where they right. stand, right. just They're before the rapture. Yeah. Rating. Mr. So Smith, did you have a question? No, sir. Okay. So then everyone reads the letter. Everyone yes. in, the, in that community reads the letter. Everybody gets their letter. That's their grade. And only the elders, the, the apostle and the prophet's elders, read the book. Yeah. The one that reads the book are the leaders of the church community. Yeah, the apostle and the prophet. Which are taken to heaven. Remember, the heavens and the earth are connected yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you, you get the elder group that's in the community, but you get the leadership taken to the angel to receive revelation from the book and then return to give it to the com I've given, sent my angel to testify to you who are gathered in the angel's presence the things that are now open to be received so the in the church community. Okay, so the multitudes that Daniel was party to, Daniel is with uh, Daniel I think it's Daniel 8, I could be wrong, is in the spirit, he's hearing. Which I oh, okay, don't, no, no, don't confuse that with this. All I'm asking is this. At the time that the apostles and the uh, elders, the apostles and the prophets that we've just talked about over the churches are taken up into the heavens, is that a different event, a different experience? And there's no connection between these two things at all? No. Okay. Remember, Dan is from the Old Covenant. He's not allowed to get that revelation but that these in, guys are getting. They're in eternity. So, Daniel is in the past. These guys are in the future. Yeah, yeah. but Daniel is, is, is in vision. These guys are taken they're at the visitation. holy okay. they're, because they're part of this dispensation. Okay. Because the connection has been made. And the only reason that Daniel is given that vision is so that he could write it down for us. Right. To give us an understanding of the things that are coming. Okay. This, basically, as I look at it, is the format 
in which the churches are going to receive revelation knowledge after the gathering. We read in Jeremiah, I'm going to gather them back to their folds. Then I'm going to raise up leaders which shall feed them. So they gather back to the communities. Then you have the teacher taken and given authority over the particular church. She becomes the angel of that church. Then the elder group is connected in a way in which they are open now to be taken to heaven and receive revelation knowledge. That will prepare them for the time of the rapture. So I imagine that full teaching from that point, from the point of the connection, is done in the format of being taken up. Right. In heaven. Okay. It's going to be done the same way it was done to John. They'll be right. taken to heaven. They're going to see exactly what John saw and that what John did. They're going to go back to the communities and they're going to give them. Notice what it goes on to say. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth, that heareth, that heareth. He's, how's he hear? He's hearing from the elder that saw it in right. the right. vision in heaven. That heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So this is giving you the understanding that they're going to hear it in the time in which the judgments and everything else are going to fall. It is not for 2,000 years in the past. It's for the time of the beginning of sorrow's gathering era. Then he goes on, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city, and from the things that are written in this book. They can only pertain to an elder. Sure. So it's talking about in the community, if anybody does despite to the presentation of this word, judgment's going to fall on them. It's going to fall heavy. God's not going to brook the nonsense that has been taking place in the human race up to this point. God will appoint, appoint a priest, a prophet, a king. He'll appoint stewards like he did the churches in the apostles' time to be the custodians of his word and they play fast and loose with it. Could care less. They're their epistles that are lost. They don't know what, where they are, what, what happened to them. Uh, he's not going to put up with that sure. nonsense. And blame it. So we shouldn't be hearing too many people saying that they've been teaching more than Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still can't get over that. That's incredible. The people amen that. Yes. <laughs> Brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches, after receiving the hidden revelations, they will be tested. To see if they will qualify for the yes. rapture. Now notice what it says. <clears throat> we read Daniel 12, 8 to 10. The words are sealed to the time of the end. Turn to Revelation, the third chapter. Verse 10 to 11. This is the... <sighs> evaluation. This is what you were referring to, the letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which lets you know that the book of Revelation is not a book of history. It's a book of prophecy. It right. has not happened yet. Right. And they've been struggling for 2,000 years trying to explain the book of Revelation and the churches as a history. construction that existed 2,000 years mm -hmm. ago. Hasn't existed yet. It will not exist until the beginning of sorrows. Until the time when the prototokis are gathered into them. Revelation, the third chapter, we want verses 10 to 11. Sorry, you said it was um, after the prototokos. Mm -hmm. Oh, it said um, it doesn't exist, the revelation, it doesn't happen until the beginning of sorrows, after the prototokos. 
are gathered into the community. The gathering we're talking about today. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because I know there's multiple gatherings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So he's evaluating the church of Philadelphia. They have endured since they were given the understanding at the gathering. Now they're progressing to the point at which the Lord is about to come in the rapture. This is their evaluation. He's saying you've done good. Keep doing what you're doing, and you're going to make it. You're going to have the fullness of the glory that I have reserved for you. The letters basically are a report card. Let sure. you know where you stand. So at the point of the elevation, the stars go above the angels. Uh -huh. Is that, that's the, that's the, what you call regime change with regards to white reaction. Yes. At that point, he understands perfectly there are now sons of God who are the Protodicus, who he took, takes orders from. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we're going to look at the totality of the this. Scripture teaches the effect of the rapture on each church community. In other words, the Lord is letting them know where each church stands. Send to Revelation, the second chapter, verse 5. What he's doing is he's giving them an understanding of exactly where they stand and exactly what needs to be done to make the correction because in no uncertain terms he's letting them know he's coming back. Revelation Two births for I remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now this is really heavy, because when he's threatening them, they're no longer going to be a church. Hmm. But should we understand that? In the removing of that candlestick, there may be a few, not the not the, uh, the the leaders, but a few in the elder congregation who are up to par. Sure. He's just talking about the ones that have transgressed, right. which cool. in this case is the majority of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if that did happen, would those who are up to par be moved to another church, another uh, community? No, they're going to rapture. But if he's going to remove the candlestick, how are they going to get to the rapture? They're going to be raptured, and the rest of the guys are going to be under judgment. Okay, so then the community continues until the rapture, at which point the judgment happens. Yeah, is what when the saying. judgment happens, then they cease to be a community. They cease to be a church, right. with the exception of the ones that make the rapture. Gotcha. And at that point, everything changes. Sure. Revelation 2, verse 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Mm -hmm. The them he's referring to are the ones that are going to be judged. The rest are going to make the rapture. <coughs> Revelation 2, verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Again, talk to the faithful. You're, you're doing good. You're going to make it. Just continue doing what you're doing. Revelation 3, verse 3.
Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So here again, he's referring to a judgment that's going to hit them suddenly, unexpectedly, because of what they're doing. So we find, uh, of course, go to Revelation 3. Verse 14. The verse 18. The Church of Laodicea. Verse of the line. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, he's saying, basically, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth, you disgust me. Why? Because of your attitude. Because, thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now this refers to people that put trust in their money. Mm -hmm. He's saying <coughs> this is true of everybody that puts their wealth above me. They put their trust in their wealth. They are guided into a deceiving state of confidence. He talks about it. I don't have need of anything. Sure. I've got everything I need. Sure. He's talking about the difference between the intellect and the soul of the individual. Yeah. The intellect is basking in his wealth and confident in his ability to provide and meet his needs. But his soul is miserable. Do you believe that that person has sold themselves into the idea that the Lord wants them to be wealthy and therefore everything they're doing is in line with what the Lord wants. Sure. Sure. <coughs> the Lord goes on to show. Look at what he says here. And no, it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. They have allowed the enemy to cut them off from the realization of what's going on in their own spiritual condition. I counsel, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. What is he saying here? He's saying the only way that they can make it right is to <clears throat> deliberately and purposely bring upon themselves adversity so they can get a spiritual reawakening of their true state. And in that way, they will become they will come into an appreciation of their true state because he says what you are now is you're miserable and naked and you're an embarrassment to the father because he's looking at you naked and he doesn't want anybody naked coming into his presence and in that respect they're totally ignorant thinking they're in the catbird seat he's talking about what they think you think you're doing good you think you got everything you need. But you don't realize you're out here on a limb, hanging by a thread, and the destruction is just a breath away for you. So we should understand that the adversity is the eye sound. Exactly. Exactly. The only way they can see for what they are, what their condition is, 
is to go through some trials, go through some hurts, go through some, through, through some things. And he says, if you go through these things, then you will again begin to clothe yourself in a robe of righteousness. And he talks about Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He's telling them, he's telling them this because he loves them. If you love a person, you'll tell them the truth. Yeah. yeah. But too many people, and these guys that, that are the movers and shakers of organized religion, don't realize what they're bringing on themselves, the egregious torment that they're going to experience because they fail to tell the truth to the congregants. And this guy is strutting his stuff back and forth. He's got a congregation of 24,000, 25,000. All you need is to be able to speak prosperity into your life. This is what God's will for your life. And not knowing that these people out there, they're like the sins. True. They're miserable and naked and poor and blind and don't realize it. And this guy is sending them straight to hell. 